Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now a question that comes up fairly regularly is on the subject of camouflage. How to paint multicam or how to paint marpat and similar. And honestly, past a point, it's all the same technique. So I thought it would be worth finally tackling it and showing you one of the ways in which you can get a fairly good uh, multicam appearance without having to get out stencils and similar like that. Now this is an impressionist view of what camouflage is going to look like. And the reason for that is if you turn around and you paint working real camouflage at this scale, well, the details on your miniature are going to disappear when you put them on the table. They're going to become shapeless blobs. So <laughs> don't paint wholly accurate camouflage, folks. Otherwise, yeah, you're going to miss out on seeing all of that cool work. So as always, all of the paints will be listed in the description below and popping up on screen as well. So without any further mucking around, let's get started. Now, because we're going to be working with some quite light colors, I've actually started with a primer of Grey Seer from Citadel. You could use pretty much anything you wanted at this stage. A light gray or a white is going to be better. Um, you could use Wraithbone or something similar, but Off-White is going to give us the best uh, primer for the colors that we're going to be using. So I'm starting here with Grey Green from Vallejo, and this, there are two colors called Grey Green. This is the really, really light one. We're going to apply this straight to his trousers, and this is going to be the base coat for our multicam. Now it's not going to be sort of the final color, you know, our finished product is going to be much more green than this, but we're essentially working in reverse in some respects. So the lighter colors, we'll lay those down first, and then apply darker ones over the top. Now, even though we are going to paint over this, I'd still suggest you want to make sure that you've got a couple of coats on there so you do have a nice solid color. Now, at this stage, you're really deciding whether you want to go for woodland or desert multicam. Here, you could use a light brown, something like tan earth, for example, but instead, I'm going to go the green route. And for this, I'm using scaly hide from the army painter. Now, there's not really a correct answer here. You could use strachan green from Citadel, any kind of not saturated, slightly gray green is going to work for this. Now what I've got, this is one of my busted old brushes. You've always got to use for an old brush, trust me. Keep them as your camo brushes, because these slightly frayed edges are going to help give us a random edge to what we're applying. So I'm going to jab some of this into my brush, just get a little bit of it off on some kitchen towel, and then I'm going to start splodging on some fairly random, what do you call them, lines, bands, around the leg. Don't worry too much if these aren't perfect. You want to keep them mostly horizontal. You're looking to cover, I'd say, roughly half of the, uh, the camo in this. Now that doesn't take terribly long, and don't worry too much if you think you've put too much on, because we are going to cover over most of that with some other colors anyhow. Now, all camouflage is basically a system of <laughs> splotches or wigglies, and at the moment we're doing the splotches. So I'm going to move on to what's going to be sort of the dark green for our camo pattern. And for this, I'm using intermediate green from Vallejo. Now, you could switch again. This could be uh, wag flesh or any sort of middling green which isn't too vibrant. Uh, this is quite a, a light one. But when we shade our miniature, that's going to disappear. So when it comes to adding the green, I've actually switched to a shorter, slightly firmer brush. Uh, this one, again, is one of my fairly cheap ones from uh, the stationary aisle. And what I'm doing, uh, your this, this level of green, you want to be quite horizontal. So just wiggle in some random splotches and then just a little bit north or south of that position. So go around here and let's just start splotching on some intermediate green. Now you can be quite quick with this. Uh, reason being, if you make any little scratches or mistakes, it works perfectly. You want those edges to be fairly ragged. And if you're worried about whether or not you've applied too much, again, we're going to cover over it. I've got here German Camo Pale Brown, and this is going to be the first of our sort of large brownish areas, and we're going to apply this in the same way. Get your ragged old brush, and 
we're going to start joining up and overlapping some of these areas a little more deliberately now. So let's go around the whole miniature and start doing the same thing again. If you're worried about whether or not this is looking too neat or it's not random enough, really easy to trick to get some randomness into your patterns is to flip your fella upside down. And you'll find that even if you are sort of subconsciously making an orderly pattern, uh, changing the way in which you see things is going to make that a bit less obvious when you flip them up again. Now using chocolate brown, we're going to paint some smaller squigglies and start with the dots on the pattern. So for this here on his knee, for example, I think I've got too much brown there. I'm going to paint just in a little misshapen squiggle and then a flicky dot quite close to it. Same over here. Ah, we'll just turn them randomly and start applying little squiggle and then a dot close by. So you want to be fairly sparing with this because we still have one last color to apply. And for this, I'm going to use ivory. You really want a fine tip on your brush for this. So you probably want to switch to a better one than the raggedy old brush you've been using. But let's see what we get with this. And just a little bit of water. And then we're going to apply just some tiny, tiny squiggles and dots in the same way as we did the brown. But you want to be very careful with these. Now with the white, I tend to find it looks best if you cross over different areas between the green and the brown. So if you've got any dark patches, just a wee slice of white there is going to sharpen things up. And I think that looks quite good. Now you'll see that we've painted straight over the top of all of his equipment while we've been doing this. So it's time to paint the rest of the figure. So I'm going to gloss over this fairly quickly because this is all going to be just straight flat colors. I'm not doing any fancy mixing or what have you. And there is one stage left on our multicam that is going to have to wait until the rest of the miniature is painted. So let's get started on that. So starting with this vest and a couple of bits of equipment, I have Russian uniform World War II. And we'll apply this as we have everything else so far. Then for his skin, I'm going to base coat using Cadian Flesh Tone. This will cover very well over these lighter primers. Now when it comes to faces, just lay down that base color. Don't need to worry about whether or not you're covering any equipment, because as I'm fond of saying, we'll paint that later. I have here some German camo beige, and we're going to paint in his shirt with this. And then we'll switch on down to khaki for some of his other equipment and webbing. Now this is great because you can finally cover over some of these areas that we would have missed and paint it over with the uh, camo pattern. And suddenly you'll see this all starts coming together. Now khaki doesn't seem very green going on, but as it darkens and once we shade it, it's going to look much more reasonable. Now for his boots and his gloves, I'm going to use tan earth. You'll find that this looks quite light going on. But again, as it darkens and when we shade it, we're going to get a much more reasonable sort of mill spec style color. Now the scarf that he's wearing could be any old color. Oh, I'm using deck tan. You might choose to go for another khaki or a beige. But at this stage, just bear in mind that this is going to look a little darker when we shade it. And I think this will be fine. I'm going to swap on down to a smaller brush and I'm going to apply German Grey to any black areas. Now you can use a straight black, uh, but I tend to think that a slightly very off black finish is going to look better uh, on these scale miniatures. So I'm going to paint in his rifle and we'll also do the equipment on his face, uh, which I'm going to find a little easier without the camera in the way. So I will come back once I've done that. Now you might be looking at his glasses and thinking, well, why wouldn't you paint an interesting pattern up there? And to that I'll say only that, oh, how I love the fact they wear, you know, simple black ballistic glasses. Nice and easy here. Now we're going to paint in finally his hat. And if I were a smarter man, I probably would have done this multicam at the start. But let's just assume he's not been in country for very long and he hasn't had time to pick up the Gucci kit. So I've got here olive grey, although any 
you know, greenish color will work fine here. If you wanted to go the opposite route and have a much lighter green, then something like Necrotic Flesh from the Army Painter is pretty handy. Now at this stage, once all of your base colors are dry, you can go back and clean up any little mistakes you might have made. So if you need to touch up his equipment, or a scarf or similar, you can do that now, so that you've got nice solid base colors for this step. Now I've got here my Agrax Earthshade, and I've given this a really thorough shake. But I'm not going to apply a huge amount of this in one go. What I'm going to do instead is get some of it off my brush actually, and apply this fairly sparingly and quite carefully over the entire miniature. So it is still going to go you know, <laughs> over the whole thing, but rather than just and flattening the whole miniature in it, we want to be quite careful about how it's applied. So this will take a little longer than ordinarily, but what it's going to do is make sure that just our shading is done with this. We don't massively change the color of the miniature by adding our earth shade. So once you're satisfied you've got all of this on, you're going to need to leave it for about 20 to 30 minutes, preferably somewhere nice and sunny, and we'll come back and get a look at what that looks like once it's dried. Now once that's dried, that ties everything together and it dulls down the really bright parts of that camo pattern. As well, it introduces plenty of shading, and quite honestly, you could chuck them on the table looking like this. What I am going to do though, is just a couple of highlights, and starting off with Kislev Flesh for his skin. Um, you could go back with a little bit of the old Cadian Flesh Tone first, but I don't really think you need to. So there's a few little blips and blops of this. Now to save time, and having to order a whole bunch of extra paints, all of my other highlights are going to be 50-50 mixes of ivory and the base color. So, let's do some khaki. A little of our German camo beige. Now you'll find if you end up with quite sharp highlights, what you can do is add just a little bit of water. It'll take a bit longer to apply them, but you'll find that by thinning them out you'll get a smoother transition of color. Now I'll move on and highlight our Russian green again, still that same mix. And when you come to these little square bobblies on the equipment, what you can do is scrub most of this off your brush and you're almost dry brushing by just lightly flicking along the top edge and just catching the raised detail there. And then the final highlight we're going to apply in this way is for his hat with the olive green and of course ivory mix. You could do the same to his boots and what have you, but I'd really suggest, well at that stage what's the point? Now from there, if you fancy, you can grab a little bit of just neat ivory, do water it down a wee bit, and you can do his scarf. Now this very last stage is completely optional. What I've got here is a tiny bit of Necron compound on one of my itty bitty, you know, really tiny makeup brushes. What I'm going to do is very carefully just flick along some of the edges of his rifle. Now, don't worry if you come close to some of the areas of you know, skin and what have you. Just slow down, and you can apply a quick dry brush of this, building up the color towards the edges. Now personally, I tend to think that looks a little unrealistic, but you have to make some concessions for the fact that we are painting miniatures for the table and a wee bit of silver will help sell the look of that rifle from a distance. Now, you don't need to do this part, which is why I've left it till last, but I've got a little bit of ivory again, and I'm going to just pick out a few of the little white spots on our multicam again, but just little whisperingly tiny specks of it. Now that's just a tiny bit of extra work, which I think really finally sells that multicam look. What I'm going to do now is take this fella outside, I'm going to hit him with a matte varnish, pop a base on, and we'll see what he looks like when he's all in context. And there we have it, our operator, I guess? What is the euphemism we're using for these guys these days? Uh, but he is complete, and the multicam is as well. So as you can see, the technique itself is really just layering paint on top of each other, same as any other painting. And if you go in with a plan, you've got an idea of which colors are going to sort of go on in what order, you will make it much easier overall. 
Unfortunately, it's not really a very quick way of doing it, but the steps at least help demystify some of that process. So thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the patrons who are keeping me ticking with paints and glue, including producers Alan Nuttall, Kari Crawford, Trainboy, Fred, and Jimmy. Your support is invaluable, folks. If you've got any comments or questions, feel free to drop them in the old box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.